back to my channel. My name is Amalia and I am a nanny turned mom. And I want to try to do these videos weekly, but obviously I just did a three month update and he's not four months yet. So I thought I'd do some backpedaling and talk about um, my second month being a mom. It was uneventful but eventful at the same time um, and it's definitely the month that I really felt the difference between being a nanny and being a mom. It, it was just a lot all at once. I was very much completely on my own. Um, no family, friends, husband at work and there's a very deep pain of isolation when you're a new mom and it didn't help that I live in Brooklyn and August is an awful, awful time of the year. Um, I thought I knew humidity being from the Midwest. I. I mean, the first summer I was here I was not prepared, and I knew when I got pregnant, I was like, great. And I was like, oh great, I'm gonna have the baby before August, not realizing that I would be stuck inside with a new baby all of August. And it was awful, because I would try and go out, and uh, we have a stroller, but we, we live on the first floor, but there's still stairs, and I tried like bringing the stroller down the stairs by myself with him in it and he would just jostle all over just was not strong enough to handle it and so then I would take him out in the carrier but he's such a hot body and my whole pregnancy and since I'm breastfeeding I was such a hot body that like he he would get heat rash because we would just be sweating from walking like a block and a half to at least go somewhere Gertrude, can you please get down? My cat. Come on. She's no longer the youngest, so she has tantrums every once in a while to get attention. Um, and it would just be really, really awful. And I also, living in New York, you can't just like put the baby in a car and go to a store or, you know, walk around. Mall of America, because that's where we moved from, the Twin Cities, and I was really scared about putting him on the subway before he got his shots. I was like, like, he's an animal. He got his shots. He's safe. Um, but I was just very concerned about being on the subway with him. I'm pr it's probably a new parent thing. Usually, like with my nanny kids, especially, I'll be like, oh, a little dirt never hurt anyone. But I was just like, I read too many. Facebook articles that would pop up with my kid was in the hospital and almost died because someone kissed them and I know that's a real thing and I know that happens and you just have to be vigilant but I didn't want to like put extra variables out there that could possibly get him sick I mean we did go on the subway for my six week appointment because we live in Brooklyn and my doctor's on the Upper East Side and so I put him in the carrier and I like had him it's a wrap carrier, so I had him under the little wrap, and I was like, if anyone sneezes, we're moving trains. Um, and then also for my nanny kids, uh, seventh birthday, we went to visit them. I really wanted to be there. So we took the stroller, we put a blanket over it, and we're like, if anyone looks at him weird, everyone's a threat, Edward. Because you just, you can't pay for a Lyft or Uber to the Upper East Side. It just... It's not worth it when the subway's there. We made it, we survived, but it was very nerve wracking and like people wanting to peer and see him and like I had one woman reach out and I kind of like haphazardly like pretended to move when I was like, don't you touch my baby, what's wrong with you? But people have done that with my nanny kids too where they're like, trying to interact with them and I'm like no don't please six inches for the holy spirit 
Um, so it was just a really difficult month and being so isolated, I, I don't know, I wasn't in the mood to join mommy groups. I just like, I don't know if it's postpartum or if it's, I just am like, I don't want to have to make new friends. And having been a nanny in New York for almost two years now, it's, I mean, it's a clicky city and it's been really difficult for me to just get into nanny groups that I feel like, I don't know, moms are so much more judgy, but also more welcoming. I don't know. I just, I didn't see the point in joining a mom group when I'm going to be going back to work anyway. Um, maybe that's, that's on me. You know, maybe it would have helped, but I'm doing better now that we can be out and about with him. Um, but the second month was just really, really hard, but it was also really, really rewarding because until about the middle of that month, I was exclusively pumping. Uh, breastfeeding just was not in the cards. It wasn't happening. I was getting frustrated. I stopped trying and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to exclusively pump because it's free, formula is expensive, um, and I don't care as long as my kid is fed. We supplemented with formula at the beginning, uh, but I was like, I'm gonna pump, I was on a schedule, but it was exhausting, because I would feed him, he would go down for the night, um, even at that time, he was sleeping like five, six hours at night, so I'd put him down, and then I would pump so there would be milk in the morning because my husband would take the morning shift and then I would have to wash everything and it was just it was just exhausting and also if he would sleep then I would pump to make sure that he had milk to eat but then also trying to work that around his like little 10-20 minute naps um, you know you barely have time to pump let alone eat or do anything. So one day my husband was warming a bottle, he was crying, it was there, and I was just like, let's just pop this in your mouth and see what happens. And he ate, and it was great. And I was like, okay, all right, let's do this. And started steadily, like, he would barely drink five minutes. And was very much like, comforting and also I think as he was used to you know room temperature milk he was getting warm milk so he'd fall asleep so quickly and it was a struggle but I persevered and I also think I just needed to do it on my own without my mom or f friends or anyone being like I'll just keep trying keep trying I just needed to like be by myself and in my own head so that I could do it my way I've never been one to like do well with people pushing me to do something. I mean, I had a tantrum when I was born because I, my mom was uh, induced too early and, you know, wrapped the cord around my neck and had a bit of like, phew, you want me to come? All right, I'm gonna do, <laughs> you know, so don't push me to do things. And it worked out and I'm happy to say that we're still breastfeeding. I've kind of stopped pumping because I have like, a freezer full already from when I was pumping but I want to start trying to pump again just to build up a supply for when I do go back to work and my husband takes his paternity leave just because one of my nanny moms she had a hard time keeping up her supply and nursing a full year and she like supplements and teas and everything and I have that like fear in my head that I'm not gonna have enough food for my baby which is fine to do formula, you know. I've done formula with my last nanny baby now, and actually I think I've done formula for almost all my nanny kids. And I'm used to it and everything, it's just, it's expensive. <laughs> I wish it wasn't. One day, when I'm rich and famous, I'm gonna buy formula for all the moms who need it because that has to be so hard to have to buy formula and everything. So, yeah, that, um, that was the big, big thing for his second month, um, 
and also I was for his second month I was trying really hard to get him to like play because he was finally being awake and being like okay with being awake and it's just like I don't know it just seemed really silly because you know we would I would do the like jingle something so he would turn his head or like have his do eye tracking and everything um but he's I was like telling the pediatrician he's like oh as long as you know just sing and talk to him so I, I sing to him all the time I've done it with all my nanny kids where I make up songs when I sing about what we're doing um and reading and his second month was when he started like talking and like making lots of sounds and it was just you know it makes it worthwhile because he started smiling and I was like oh my god you know who I am I'm not just like this person who carries you and feeds you you're actually happy to be with me so the second month was you know make starts making the first six weeks first month worth it my nanny kid's grandma she says that evolutionarily evolution wise i don't know uh babies start smiling at six weeks because otherwise the kids would just throw them off the parents would just throw them off the cliffs because they were so like over the crying and the infant fussiness and I was like makes sense you know uh, I mean he wasn't okay there were some bad days not gonna lie but there was one day where I cried four times and my husband had decided to work late and so I texted him I was like are you almost home and he's like I just left and I was just like and he just William cried all day and I was just sitting there rocking the stroller sipping a coke from McDonald's because that's my little treat I get myself because it's a dollar and I was just crying and like you know in your head when you're in it you are like this is never going to end and that's a big difference from being a nanny where like you know there is a start time there is an end time and you know it, on the worst days of being a nanny you know it's going to end you know that pa those parents are going to walk through that door and the kid is going to be their problem and even though i kind of think i still feel that way when jake comes home i've learned that i can't just be like toss william at him either because he needs time to de decompress um and I'm still here and when he's crying and my husband isn't able to calm him down you know I want like I try and have me time but I also want to like help but it's also a learning curve for my husband because he wants to you know try to do it on it's it's a balancing act I feel like because he wants to do it on his own and you know I have more baby experience than him and I don't ever want to like overstep my bounds and come off at I mean bossy or you know when I'm trying to help make it sound like I'm like oh you're doing it wrong <laughs> you don't know what you're doing because he's a good dad and he does so it's just also yeah having that responsibility to help him out but also um, having just the responsibility of like planning for a day with my child with my nanny kids you know the parents are like oh I want you to get this done I mean in general I know what I'm doing but also I've never taken care of a baby so young so like I'm used to a little bit of interaction and play and reading and you know being able to go out and do things cuz all my nanny kids were young like baby interactive babies not in the summertime um, and even in the winter even in Minnesota in the winter there's places you can go um, 
so it just it was just a very you know bring in new baby new mom the time of year where I live how you get around it's just like it was probably the perfect combination to make me feel really lonely and really isolated um unfortunately but we're not there anymore and I made it through it and you know to any moms out there there is an end and just kind of keep telling yourself they can't cry forever they can't even if you have a colicky baby eventually it will get better um, I don't think Williams ever I don't think he's considered colicky he has his fussy moments but he doesn't you know cry three hours straight except you know a few days or so I I put him in a Brewers jersey like it was a jersey onesie but it was like the jersey material it was that day that I cried four times and I maybe he just didn't like the feel of it on his skin because when Jake came home he took it off of him and he seemed fine for the rest of the night so I don't know maybe he just hates the Brewers Um, I made a list again, so I'm trying to stay on task, even though this video is getting long. Oh, and this is the month, the second month was when we started really seeing our cats react to him. We have three cats, George, Gwen, and Gertie. Um, they are seven, six, and five give or take a little bit uh, I mean the whole time George has been very much like wants to love him too much like he wants to cuddle on him and it you know he's he's still very little and George is he's a big orange tabby cuz he's fat and you know you just you can't love him too much cuz might hurt him <laughs> so he's been great Gwen, she, she doesn't not like him, but she doesn't like him. Like, she'll jump up and be like, oh, you're holding that, and like, slink away. It's like, sorry. And then Gertie, who's our baby, who's been my baby, um, the second month was when she actually started coming around me again, because like, she used to sleep next to me like right here every single night and we brought the baby home and she like just it was like I betrayed her and so the second month she started like coming near me and you know checking William out and kind of being near me and him um, William doesn't seem to notice the cats either way um, we'll like take his hand and have him like pet them or whatever but like if he sees them or like I mean they'll put their, their tails in his face and there's not really any reaction um, he's just like oh these things are here and cool um, so none of my cats are mean my, none of my cats have ever been mean um, George is very much what I call a dog cat we used to take him for walks uh, George and Gertie are always very friendly very wanting to meet people if anyone comes in the door maintenance guy George is like ooh friend um, so pretty much they all reacted the way I thought they would but you know Jake and I we can't wait for the day when you know George can cuddle with him or Gertie can play with him or Gwen can at least you know walk by him with not be, you know and not be angry about it um, so that was where the big uh, second month I know I'm going a little bit backwards but I'm just trying to like also do these videos as a memory you know diary for me in this time um, and yeah the second month was a big month we started breastfeeding and it ended with the two month shots which then in turn allowed me to be a little more free with my time and I'm sure 
will be a lot of other things, you know, that are different from being a nanny to being a mom. I mean, breastfeeding, never had to do that before. I, that's why I also think I felt so comfortable pumping and bottle feeding because that's all I've ever done. I've never breastfed one, breastfed one of my nanny kids. Not something that, you know, was in the job requirements and, you know, it just, bottles seemed easier and more natural, which I know is really weird, but I've been, you know, bottle feeding forever, so it seemed very natural to me. So it is very different having this, like, person kind of attached to you and also now, you know, Jay can't help feed him with his useless nipples. So that was something to definitely get used to. I don't think this video was very cohesive. I'm trying. Um, yeah, that's, this is my normal look generally. Nursing tank, hair pulled back. Oh, also in the second month, I totally thought I had missed out on the postpartum hair loss and I was like, ha ha ha, look at me. And then, yeah, no, my hair started coming out in clumps. Uh, I could probably nest 80 birds with the amount of hair I've lost postpartum. When I was home, I was brushing my hair out and I was just putting it in the sink and I was going to clean it up putting it in the sink to like gather it in one place. My dad walks by, he's like, are you okay, Mia? I was like, oh yeah, it's normal. <laughs> he's like, you should talk to your doctor. And I was like, I think this is normal. It's normal. If it's not normal, please someone tell. I've heard women talk about like losing a lot of hair postpartum. So I thought it was normal. I'm trying not to Google things so much anymore because you know, you just Google anything and it says you're gonna die. So, I mean, we're all gonna die, but die sooner and more painfully than you would like. So that's my video today. I was hoping it would be shorter, but it's not. Again, I'm trying to do these weekly and they're gonna be really, you know, no editing. Here we go, talking about my experience. Um, and I think I'm gonna continue going backwards a little bit uh, so next week will be about the first month which uh, I was very blessed to have a lot of help and support the first month which is why I think the second the second month was really hard because all of a sudden it was like okay you're on your own <laughs> have fun um, not that I regret it because I think with this motherhood thing like I said I needed to kind of be thrown into the water and told to swim. Uh, so, you know, it gets better. And, you know, I actually do look back on my second month because he was so little and things were so new with a lot of fondness, even though when I was in it, it was so hard. And I cry a lot less now. I mostly cry because he's so freaking cute and he's just like, I can't squeeze you. Um, but yeah, I could talk about how cute he is forever, but this video's already gone on too long, so if you have any questions, let me know um, in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed watching, and yeah, I don't have a sign off. I should figure that out. Um, Y'all have a good week and...